Welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. Today I thought we'd do a fun little painting. I think you'll really enjoy this one. So let's start out and have them graphically run all the colors across your screen that you need to do this painting along with me. And as usual, they'll come across in the same order as I have them on the palette, starting with the white and working around. While they're doing that, let's go up here and talk a little bit about what I've done already. As you can see, today we have a black canvas. Now we make these black canvases by coating them with just a thin coat of black acrylic paint and allowing that to dry completely. This one's a little bit different because this time I started with yellow. I used in the yellow acrylic right in here. Then I took a little contact paper and cut out a little circle and glued it onto the yellow. And then I painted it black. Then I let it dry. And just before we started this, I covered the entire canvas with a thin even coat of alizarin crimson. Now crimson is a very, very transparent color. This still looks black because it's so transparent. Now we're ready to start off and have some fun. This particular painting I'm gonna to do today came to me, the idea did, in the form of a postcard from a young man in Arizona. So if you're watching, thanks. You know who you are. You're about 11, 12 years old, and we write each other. I'm gonna start out with a little bit of white, and I'm gonna go right into cad yellow white and yellow. I'll put the white in there just to make the yellow a little brighter. There we go. Really load that brush full. Look at there, a lot of paint in the brush. Okay, let's go right up here. Now this is going to be our sun. We're going to have a beautiful sunset. So this is the sun, so we'll start from here and work outward. We want this area to be the brightest part of our painting. Okay, ready? Let's just go in here, hit it, and begin doing this. Oh my gosh. Just start, look at there. See, that way automatically it gets darker, 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 darker as it works out from the sun. Look at there. Now then, the problem is you need to clean that brush between every loading. You don't want to ever take this dark color back into the sun. Back into our yellow and white. Load the brush really full, really full. Okay, let's do that again. Right into here, boom. Take out all your frustrations. Just really sock it. Spin that brush. And begin working on some basic shapes. You know, in Arizona, New Mexico, they have some of the most beautiful sunsets anywhere in the country. I have a lot of friends that live there. There we go. Okay, clean the brush again. I'm back into my white and cad yellow. Load that old brush full. Maybe, boom, right here. There it comes, here. there's another. Just big old arms coming out from here. Just make all these beautiful shapes. But you can see how this yellow is picking up that crimson that's underneath. And don't stay in one place and keep grinding it. Move it, keep that brush moving. Washing the brush again. <laughs> I about wore out a fan brush here. Yellow and white. Okay, let's go right in here, hit it again. This time, we'll just bring this one. Maybe it just works right on off in here. Just like so. Maybe there's just happy little things floating around here and there. Wherever you want them. Wherever. And right along in here, let's just do some little stringy things. See if we can just put a few of those and a few little fluffy ones. Just as many of these as you want. There we go. Okay, now then, if you just tried blending all this, chances are it would just mush up and you'd end up with a mess. I'm gonna take the knife and very lightly just zip off some of the heavier areas where there's a lot of paint. That color remains in the canvas, don't worry about it. See there? And just zip it right off. If you wore your sunglasses today, this is going to be a bright painting. There we go. And when you're doing these black canvases, you can do the base color with any of the transparent colors. The blues, the greens, they all work just as well. So experiment, have some fun. All right, let's take the two inch brush and now very gently, let's just begin blending. Start in the light area and work outward. Look at there. Look at there. All kinds of beautiful effects will just happen automatically. These are our happy accidents. <laughs> Don't fight them. 
Don't really try to plan this. Just, just sort of do it and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna wash the brush. I'm beginning to pick up a little bit more paint than I want. So wash your brush. <laughs> At least by the time you finish this painting, you're gonna be an expert brush washer. Let's go up in here and continue to blend. Anytime you go back to this light area, you always have a clean brush. Whether it's a fan brush or a two inch brush, makes no difference. Always a clean brush in there. Look at all the beautiful red colors that are just shining. Mm. That is one fantastic sky. And they're very easy to do. And as I said earlier, when, you, when you're trying this at home, experiment a little. Try all kinds of different colors. Try some of the, oh, like a thalo blue is very transparent, Prussian blue. All the greens are very transparent. You can just make some unbelievable effects on these black canvases. Now then, let's have some more fun. Take the same color, same color, load it back on the fan brush, and let's just put, let's put some more of these little stringy clouds in here. I like him. They're sort of close to the horizon. I'm sure there's a proper name for these clouds. I just call them little stringy clouds. I'm bad about making up words, so don't go to your dictionary and try to find half of them. There we go. Just, just little happy things. Right along here and there. Okay. Now, very gently, just blend these. See there? That easy. That easy. Now, let's have some fun. Let's come up here and, and let's remove this piece of, of contact paper that I have here and I'll show you what's underneath it. So let's come right in here. Watch. Just take the knife, pick up the edge, grab it, and look at there. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that a super easy way to put in a happy little sun? Okay, now then, let me find a clean fan brush, and I'm gonna bring a little bit of that color over just to bring the edges together and to soften it. Just to soften it all together. Look at that. See there? Maybe there's a happy little cloud that just sort of floats across there. You can just pick up a little of the color and bring it right across. And you can make a, a beautiful moon this way too. It doesn't have to be the sun, it could be the moon. Now then, we'll take a little more of that bright yellow color. That's white, with a little cad yellow. Maybe there's a little cloud or two that just, just literally floats right across. I can't. However many you want. And with a clean, dry, two-inch brush, very gently. And just blend all that together. That easy. Okay. Isn't that, a, isn't that a sneaky little way of making a beautiful, beautiful sky very easily? I thought you'd like that. Let's have some more fun. We'll take some Van Dyke Brown, some Dark Sienna. Throw in a little black, too. What the heck? We're just looking mainly for dark colors. We can throw in some crimson. Whatever you got this dark, drop it in there. Load that brush full of paint. Look at all the paint. Okay, let's go right up in here. And maybe there's a, maybe there's a happy little mountain. We're gonna have a small mountain in this because we want it to be far, far away. And I'm just gonna use the, just the corner of the fan brush to put in our basic shape. Boy, as I say, in New Mexico and Arizona and all those, they have some of the most beautiful, beautiful mountain formations. Certainly not like the mountains that I grew up with in Alaska, but beautiful. have this one grow a little bit. Let's have some of the most unique rock formations. There we go. See that? Oh, I know what let's do. Let's have some fun. Right underneath here, I'm going to take some of the same yellowish color and pull it straight down, like a reflection. See, pull it straight down, pull it 
straight down. Then we'll take a big brush, grab it, pull hard. See, and we're gonna have some light under there. Look at that. See, now we have a little light area. And our little mountain color, same mountain color. We can just pull that right on down. It goes right off into there, wherever. We don't know where it goes, don't really care. Okay, let me, let me grab another fan brush. I have several fan brushes going, so I don't have to spend all my time cleaning them. Go into a little yellow, a little bright red, yellow ochre, and a little Indian yellow. Just, just sort of mix all these colors up on the brush. I'm going to reach up here and grab a little bit of the dark sienna, too. There. There, maybe a little more red. Okay. Now we have a multitude of colors going on in that brush. There's not just one color that you can see it a little better. Look at all the things happening. Good, let's go up here. Now then, here's our light source. So we're gonna touch and begin just creating the illusion of all kinds of beautiful little rock formations. I'm just using the just the corner of the fan brush. Look at all those. It's a super nice, easy way to make some of the beautiful mountains, some of the fantastic rock colors that you see in that part of the country. Mm. See, I know there's an old coyote sitting out there. I can just sort of feel it. He's sitting way down here at the base looking up at the moon. And he's singing his song. Don't want too much. Don't want too much. And anywhere you want, you can go back with the dark and shadow it. You can change these as often as you want. So now then, come back. Put a little more red right in there while we let that one really sing. Mm. Isn't that neat though? That you can do them that easy. Okay, going to grab a little touch more of the red. That looks a good. Put some there, too. Just throw in all kinds of little highlights. We get some of the most fantastic letters from our friends in, in this part of the country. You know, it's, it's unreal. Uh, in some parts, of, some parts of the country, in Arizona specifically, they're playing our show as, as much as an hour and a half a day, three shows a day. That's, that's unbelievable. God, I thank you very much. And if you're not playing the show as often as you'd like in your area, call your station. Let them know what you'd like to see. they like to hear from you. Okay. Sometimes I, I get to talk in here and forget to paint, so we'll paint. We'll go back and we'll get right into our dark sienna and little Van Dyke brown. Tap a little color in there. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, we begin to worry about the lay of the land. Just gonna begin picking up some little things here. Don't wanna kill this little bright area. I want it to look like there's a little light shining through there when we're finished. Leave some of those little soft, misty areas. So I want this back here to be very dark. But a touch just a little bit of that same color that we use to highlight the, the mountain here and begin playing a little of that here and there just where I think light would strike don't overdo don't overdo there let it just work right down into there see that little little soft area still stays in there that's what we're looking for okay another little hill right here. So you can just begin creating all kinds of illusions. There we go. Mm, that is one fantastic sky. I hope you enjoy this sky. And I really hope you try it. As I said earlier, a young friend sent me a postcard that it really gave me the idea for this painting. 
We get so many of our ideas from, from cards and photographs that people send. So if you have something you'd like, you'd like to see painting, send me a card. I'd love to hear from you. There we are. And out there. And then maybe over here, we have a little hill coming down here. I'm back to my dark color. Just dropping that in. I tell you what, that looks just like a natural place. There ought to be a happy little path going. We'll do that in a minute. We'll put a little path in there. Why not? Don't let your color get too bright on these canvases. These black canvases show color, it seems like a hundred times more than a white canvas. So be careful with them. Be careful. Be careful. Color just stands out on them. Let's take a, let's take a fan brush here. And I'm just going to very lightly come right up in here. And just sort of work it back and forth. And create, see, just that easy. You can create the illusion of, of a little path. I know Coyote had to have a way to walk up and get up on this mountain so he could sing to the moon. Or the sun, whatever. I think we said this was a sunset. It didn't look like a moon scene to me, though. Look at that, see? Can you see that path just coming right in there? That easy. And it sort of goes around the corner. Try to avoid having your path perfectly straight. It really looks a little better. It's got a little uh in it, a little bend in it. Just a, a gentle bend. That sounds like a name, good name for a TV show, gentle bend. I have to remember that. There we go. Now then, back to my back to my two-inch brush, and let's just tap in a little bit more of this color. Just this. This is yellow ochre. Little Indian yellow, little cad yellow, and it's on that dirty brush. It has the brown in it. So just allow these colors to all mix on the brush. Just tap it, okay? And you have to sort of make big decisions here. Where's, where's your next little hill going to be? There it is. See? And you can create plane after plane after plane. Just that easy. That easy. And fantastic that you can make such effects so quickly. Darker, 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 darker. See, and that sort of closes that little path in. There we go. This is Arizona, New Mexico, and then we got to put a cactus in this son of a gun. We can't. We got to have a cactus. Now I got to admit to you, where I live in Alaska, there's not a whole bunch of cactus. They're sort of rare, but but I'll do my best here. I'll do my best. So if the cactus don't look just like it does in your yard, if you live in that area, uh, pretend there's snow on it. There we go. Okay, see, that easy. We've got some nice little hills here. And it creates a lot of distance by having all of these different planes. You can see wee back in there. There, all right. Let's have some fun with some, some cactus. I'm gonna go right into the liquid black with a liner brush. Just just dip it right in, okay? Maybe there's a little cacti. Isn't that what you call them, cacti? Or maybe that's more than one. He lives wee back in the distance right there. And he's got an arm. See there? Get a little more paint. We give him another arm. Look at there. And maybe you can just see the indication of a third arm. My golly, that's not a bad looking little cactus. Let's have one right here in front of the moon. We'll make this one even farther back. Farther back. He's a tiny little cactus. Tiny. Just using the liner brush. There, we'll give him a little arm right there. Okay, now then. Let's have a big cactus. We need a big strong cactus. He he really got a lot of light. And, Life was good to him, so let's let's build a big one. Big old cactus, a lot of black. I think this big cactus is gonna live 
He certainly is right now. Right there. Right there. There. This is just straight midnight black. Okay, like that. We'll just make it with a fan brush. Let's give him a big arm right here. Big old arm. Comes right down and bends. Bloop, just like that. There we are. Give him a big, strong arm. So he stands out here and waves at everybody that goes by. Bring it around like that. Does that look like a cactus? There we go. And down here, we need a big strong bottom so it holds up all these arms. And maybe we can just see the indication here of a third arm. It comes right out here. It comes right on down. Just use your fan brush. Look at there. See? This cactus has three arms. It'd be hard to make a sweater for him. There we go. Now we can begin getting the shape all the way we want it. All right. Make him a little bigger down here at the base. He needs a strong foot to hold up all that weight. And sometimes, sometimes, there's just little cactuses that, little barrel cactuses are on look like that. Yeah, they look like a little post stuck in the ground nearly. They're pretty. There we go. Now then. Okay. Okay, that gives us a basic shape for a little cactus. Let me wash a fan brush here. And in your painting, you put as many cactus as you want, or as few. Now, cactus are normally green. So I'm gonna go right into the black, put a little black right there, and a touch of the yellow. See, just a touch. When you mix black and yellow, it makes a beautiful green. Then I'm gonna tap. I wanna tap the brush and remove any of the excess paint. Maybe so it'll show up a little better. I'll add the least little touch of white. That's when you're painting yours, maybe you don't want to add the white. I just want you to be able to see it better. Tap out that excess paint. There. Okay, let's go back up here. I want to make this look like there's a whole bunch of little sticky things on it. So, just touch. See? And start on the edge, because here's your light coming from, coming from the moon over here, the sun. And just begin tapping. See, start at the bright edge and work around. That way it'll get darker, darker, darker as it works around the cactus and it makes it look round. And that's sort of nice. Them square cactuses, they're sort of rare. There we go, see there, just tap, tap, tap. And it gives the feeling of roundness to your cactus. Maybe, maybe right out here, lights playing through and you can see a little bit of fuzzy things right out on the edge. The little fuzzy things what stick in your finger when you touch them. Make you go, ooh. There we are. There we go. Just, just a tiny bit. We, we don't want this arm over here to be left out, so. Can you see what's happening there? All we're doing is just touching. Just touch. Start with the outside edge. Do it first, so it'll automatically be the brightest and then tap, tap, tap right on around like that. Maybe a touch board right there. We'll let some, <coughs> we gonna really let some light drop right in. Look at there. Little bit of light's just singing right through there. That one will stand out nicely. Now, if you want to keep that one looking like it's in the back, I'll take my dark paint, pull it distinctly over it, so that way it makes that arm stay around that side. If you don't watch it, these little arms will sneak around on this side on you. Yeah, sneaky little dudes. Okay, this little round cactus here, we want some, want the most highlight right on the top, like that. And then just 
gently, gently come down the side. Same way. Just barely, barely tapping. Lighter, lighter, lighter. So it gets darker, darker as it comes around. And we'll let it come right on out. There we go. And I hope this gives you a nice idea. I hope my friends like this in Arizona and New Mexico because they wrote me several letters wanting to have some paintings that showed their part of the country. They're very proud of their part. And it is some of the prettiest, prettiest country in the world. I went to the Grand Canyon one time. I've never seen such a hole in the ground. Good gosh, it's beautiful. All right. Okay, now we can just put on a few little highlights here and there. We'll brighten these up a little. I'm using just a yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Touch of the bright red, just a touch. Just sharpen those up. Be careful with that red. Well, that son of a gun will eat up your whole world in a second. There we are. Okay, I think we're getting the feeling of a nice deserty type thing here. Now, one of the things that worked very well was this light area that we put in here. That really, really does help. Let's take a little bit of red. We'll sign this one and call it done. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. So from all of us here, I'd like to wish you a happy painting. God bless. Thank you.